Avalanches don't discriminate. You know, they're equal opportunity killers. And they affect everyone in the mountains. You know, whether you're snowboarding, skiing, snowmobiling, sledding, cross-country skiing, hiking, snowshoeing, extreme snow angeling. If you live close to snow-covered mountains, you need to know about avalanches. It really just goes with the territory. Everyone's really excited. A fresh storm had just come in and dropped over two feet of new snow. This blasting rock and roll music, and, and you get to the exit point. So Mike was finishing his ski cut, and instead of waiting, he just charged right into the slope. And in his first turn, a huge rooster tail of powder came up, and everyone in the group started cheering, yeah, go get it. And then in his third turn, we saw the slope just start to crumble completely. Your heart just sinks, because you realize, we just screwed up big time. Even though, you know, you've got this organized rescue and you've got people getting to them within 15 minutes, you, you don't always get that luck that you're gonna get down there and, and everything's gonna work out all right. Some of the medical staff initiated CPR, but um, about 40 minutes after the avalanche had occurred, they had ruled his time of death. After the accident, when we were driving home, I thought, those three turns, that wasn't working. Avalanche accidents are so tragic because they affect the entire winter community. I've personally experienced what it feels like to lose friends in an avalanche accident. The devastating ripple effect it has on everybody in the community. What is an avalanche? There's a lot of different kinds of avalanches, but the kind that causes the most trouble are what we call dry slab avalanches. A slab avalanche is like a monster in a horror film. It lies underneath the perfect facade of this enticing powder. And it's just waiting for a trigger to come along, like you, to collapse that weak layer, and then that collapse just goes outwards in all directions. The slope just shadows like a pane of glass. There's no escape. It rockets down the hill, bounces you off trees and rocks on the way down, comes with you over a cliff. I mean, does any of that sound dangerous to you? I was not aware, and I did not comprehend the dangers that were out there that day. When I triggered the avalanche, it wrapped me up immediately. Not a second later, I was hit in the back with what well, felt like a truck. I didn't even have a chance. I ended up laying there in the snow with two broken femurs and my broken left arm for between seven and eight hours. I've had a total of four surgeries, still in therapy three days a week, trying to learn how to walk again and get use of my body again. Avalanches are very violent events. One out of four people are killed by the trauma of hitting trees and rocks on the way down. And after they tumble you to the bottom, then the avalanche debris instantly sets up like concrete. You can't just pop off out of this. Somebody else has to get you out of the snow. Really fun day. It was beautiful powder snow, blue skies, sunshine, just pow shots, nothing extreme. We were trying to get gnarly or anything. Came around the corner, dropped in. It was great. And then saw cracks shoot out all around me. I did see like the sky for a moment and then just a whole wave of snow went over my face. I had like a moment of, ah, oh, maybe I can just punch through to the top. And as soon as I tried to move at all, I realized that I couldn't even bend a finger. The most important avalanche skill to learn is how to read avalanche terrain, which mainly means judging slope steepness. Almost all avalanches occur on slopes steeper than 30 degrees, but you know what? When the snow is sketchy, we can still have lots of fun playing on mellower terrain. We just want to make sure we're not on, underneath, or even connected to steeper slopes. The bottom line is the only time we should even consider getting into steep terrain is when we have safe avalanche conditions. Some slopes are going to produce much worse outcomes should they avalanche than other slopes. For example, if you're above a bunch of trees, rocks, cliffs, or you're gonna get washed into a lake or a gully, 
The outcome of getting caught in an avalanche like that is much worse than if you're in some big wide open meadow. The difference between riding in a ski resort and riding in the backcountry is really night and day. In a ski resort, we use explosives and terrain closure to minimize the risk of avalanches to our customers. But outside the ski area, once you step just two feet over that rope line, you're in a totally different environment. Anybody that's going into the backcountry or thinking about going off-piste at a resort really needs to understand that it's a totally uncontrolled environment. There isn't any ski patrol, uh, they're not bombing or doing any avalanche control. It can be really dangerous. So essentially you need to be, you know, your own avalanche expert. So in nine out of 10 avalanche fatalities, they're triggered by the victim or somebody in the victim's party, which is actually good because it's not like getting struck by lightning. We have a choice. That means if we learn something about avalanches, we can avoid getting caught in avalanches. Avalanche safety can seem totally overwhelming, you know, but there is a systematic step-by-step -step process that can keep you alive in avalanche terrain. Just knowing five basic things can prevent most avalanche accidents. Get the gear, get the training, get the forecast, get the picture, and get out of harm's way. Everyone who goes into backcountry avalanche terrain needs basic avalanche rescue gear. You need an avalanche transceiver, a shovel, and a probe. And you need to practice a lot to know how to use all of this gear because your friend only has about 15 minutes to live buried beneath the snow. A lot of people also use an inflatable avalanche airbag backpack that will help them rise to the top of avalanche debris. How well does this avalanche rescue gear actually work? Well, for one out of four people killed in an avalanche, they're gonna die from trauma. They're gonna hit trees or rocks on the way down the slope. So avalanche rescue gear isn't gonna do anything for them. The rest of them die from asphyxia, from breathing their own carbon dioxide underneath the snow. But it doesn't have to be that way. If everyone wore an avalanche airbag backpack, as well as an avalanche transceiver, two out of three people who die from asphyxia would still be alive. The bottom line is avalanche rescue gear will only save about half of us. But in order to stack the odds in my favor, I make sure to never go skiing without them. As sledders, we travel in the backcountry a little bit differently than skiers, but I still need to have my avalanche gear attached to my body. Having it attached to my tunnel does me no good. If I get separated from my sled, I get separated from my safety gear. If your buddies that you ride with don't have the training and the equipment, don't let them ride with you. So now that you've got the gear, you've got to get the training. So when you take an avalanche course, you're basically getting keys to a whole new world. You'll learn about avalanche terrain, snowpack, weather, rescue. Essentially, you're trying to take the guesswork out of travel in avalanche terrain. As a first timer just coming in, it's really important to take the right classes and gain all the knowledge before going out in the backcountry. Getting the training isn't just taking an avalanche class. It's a great start but really it's about practicing what you've learned. You know, make it a ritual. Make it fun. You know, throw down some lunch money and do some time drills. You know, when it comes down to it, it's about having your friends back and knowing that they have yours. It's not just the skiers that need to get the training because sleds are taking us further into the backcountry, so we really need to bring our avalanche skills up to the level of our riding skills. you got to get the forecast. These avalanche forecasters are pros. They're going to tell you everything you need to know. They're going to tell you about the snowpack. They're going to tell you about the weak layers. They're going to tell you where avalanches are going to happen, where you can likely avoid avalanches. All that information is one click away. To get the avalanche forecast, visit avalanche.ca in Canada or avalanche.org in the States. Before I even get on the snow, I check my local avalanche advisory. So take the time, get the forecast. When you're traveling in the backcountry, you gotta get the picture. What's that mean? It means pay attention. 
Look for recent avalanches. Listen for cracking or wumping that's taking place around you. Look for recent storm snow, wind-loaded snow. Look for rapid thawing. If you look for all these things, you're gonna get the picture. You're gonna be a safer backcountry skier. You get out of harm's way in the backcountry by first avoiding suspect slopes and terrain to begin with. We don't wanna regroup in avalanche paths and we don't wanna stop or regroup in runout zones. Some of my best advice I can give you is when we're out hill climbing and there's a bunch of us, don't go park right at the bottom in the avalanche path. Park on the outside, stay out of harm's way. Just like you ski a slope, one person at a time, once you're at the bottom, get out of the way of the avalanche path. We want you to realize that avalanches are dangerous, but you can avoid getting caught in them. First, get the gear, but then you've gotta get the training before ever going into the backcountry. Next, always check your local avalanche forecast so you can anticipate the given avalanche conditions for the day. You can get the picture by looking for the obvious signs of instability and you'll be getting out of harm's way by managing your exposure to potentially hazardous slopes. A lot of times when people watch us in the films, all they see is the action of us shredding these big lines. But what you don't see is the behind the scene, all the prep that goes into making sure that the slopes are safe, checking out the snowpack, waiting for snow to settle, doing all the homework it takes to safely rip the big lines. All this information is great and incredibly practical. But at the end of the day, if you feel uneasy about something, it's about having the courage to say no and walk away. The mountain isn't going anywhere. It doesn't matter if you've made thousands of good calls. All it takes is one bad call, and that's one too many. Some days the mountains are screaming, get out of here. And some days the mountains are going, come on in. It's time to party.